So Donald Bradman won't need to be told how much easier it is to disrupt a five-day cricket match than it is a 90-minute football game. Quite apart from the advantages of extra time, the anti-apartheid groups should be able to make use of the gentlemanly pace of cricket and the fact that most of the players are stationary on the field. Now, with the footballers, a fairly common tactic was the blowing of whistles, which confused the players about the referee's decisions. But with the cricketers, a far more effective tactic, I'm told, will be the use of pocket mirrors to effectively blind the batsman. And if that doesn't work, or if the police confiscate the mirrors, then I'm told that beer cans are an effective alternative. Of course, if the weather isn't sunny, then the mirror trick would be out of the question. But I'm told that an effective alternative would be for a group of anti-apartheid demonstrators to get together, all armed with transistor radios, all tuned to separate stations, and all going at full pitch. And if that doesn't put the batsman off his stroke, then I'm told that the sound of a thousand balloons all going off as a fast ball comes racing down the pitch would almost certainly distract the most able of batsmen. And even if the demonstrators don't adopt some of their more far-fetched tactics like releasing large quantities of grasshoppers onto the pitch or releasing fleas into the crowd, even a simple tactic like moving around in a small group behind a sightboard would be enough to annoy most batsmen. And if all else fails, well, there's a technique that's been used successfully overseas. Mass aerial bombardment of the field and players with paper darts. Again, enough to put most players off their stroke. And this year, I'm told, we can expect a technical escalation in this form of warfare. Uh -huh.